So this right here is Compose Desktop Application. It's uh, easily resizable, which means we can test our uh, UI and see whether it adapts uh, well on uh, each and every screen size. Like for example, as you can see, we can move it around and you can see how our UI adapts basically uh, based on the screen size. So now we don't have the bottom bar, now we have the navigation rail. And uh, instead of seeing that uh, single list screen, now we can see details and the list screen uh, side by side. Also, if I increase this window uh, furthermore, uh, then we will be able to see here the third uh, uh, panel here on the right side, for example, for the analytics. Be sure to watch this video until the end if you want to learn how to make uh, adaptable and a resizable screen, which uh, works on uh, all platforms in a Compose multi-platform. So in the past few days, I've been experimenting and uh, trying to figure out how I can make my uh, UI more responsive. Um, I have stumbled upon uh, one dependency for a Compose multi-platform, which is called Material 3 Adaptive. Now, this is not the same uh, Material uh, 3 Adaptive as in Android, because uh, I think that there are a few differences. But nevertheless, if you want to use Adaptive Layout for a Compose multi-platform, this is the way to go. So I have already added this uh, dependency into my project, and uh, by using this dependency, I'm able to utilize this uh, Window Adaptive Info class. Now, that uh, class is available inside this um, composable function called Current Window Adaptive Info, and it provides us the information about uh, the screen width, uh, the screen height, and the other useful information uh, regarding uh, our actual device. This uh, window adaptive info is uh, also important because it provides us the information about the window posture. So this uh, window adaptive info is uh, especially useful for uh, foldable devices because it provides the property, like a window posture, to uh, figure out uh, whether our current device uh, is a foldable or not, and whether that device is uh, a tabletop, which means that uh, we have basically half closed the foldable device. So that's what this uh, is tabletop property actually is. Uh, there is also this uh, hinge list property, which contains a list of uh, uh, hinge info. Now, in most cases, uh, all uh, foldable devices, like 95% of uh, foldable devices, will have a, a single hinge which means that uh, those devices have uh, two parts of the screen, right? So we have one part and the other part. And when we uh, close them together, we have only one hinge. But if we had, for example, like uh, three different uh, parts of that screen, then we will need the two hinges. However, I don't think there are many um, of those kind of devices that contain uh, more than one hinge. But nevertheless, they have um, adapted their API to support those kind of cases as well in the future. Now, before we open up a phone, a tablet, and a foldable emulators, let me first introduce you with this uh, approach that uh, I have created uh, in this case. So, uh, you see that this uh, window size class uh, is not actually the same, I think, as the one in Android, because here uh, I cannot access those um, uh, constants like the compact, the medium, and other. So, uh, I can only access those uh, uh, values for the width and height of the actual screen, which are uh, quite useful as well. And based on those values, I have actually mapped uh, this device type to be either large, expanded, extra large, medium, or compact, or fold, right? Uh, I can see here breakpoint v2 and, uh, v, uh, and uh, v1, but I cannot access actually those uh, constants like uh, expanded, uh, compact, and medium. So uh, let me first show you this whole class. So this seal class is called device type and it's wrapped uh, in this uh, comparable because I'm uh, overriding this compare to uh, function so that we can compare multiple different device types, right? And the reason uh, for that is because I want to uh, implement the logic so that I can compare uh, if current device type is uh, greater than or equal uh, to, for example, medium and so on. So that's why I needed to implement this uh, comparable interface and uh, add this uh, rank property as well. So each and every data class here or a device type is marked with a specific um, a rank number. So this compact has a zero, medium has a one, foldable two, expanded three, large four, and uh, extra large five, okay? And down below, I also have a couple of functions, infix functions, that uh, are used to compare and say uh, whether the current device is a greater than or equal to other device and so on, and it will be easier for us to render our screen. Let me just show you that around. So, uh, device type. So, this is our device type that we are actually getting uh, from this window adaptive info, right? 
So down below, you can see that I'm rendering uh, my uh, UI or my composable uh, elements based on this device type. So for example, here I have a custom bottom bar and I'm showing this bottom bar only if this device type is actually of a compact type. So the compact type means that we're using a mobile device in most cases, okay? However, down below in the content of this uh, scaffold where I'm actually displaying uh, uh, those uh, screens like a uh, list screen, detail screen and that uh, sidebar for the analytics. I'm doing one if check and saying uh, if a device type or a current device type is a greater than or equal to a uh, device type medium, okay? So we are showing this uh, kind of uh, layout structure only when we are using uh, devices which are uh, either in a landscape mode or they are uh, not uh, mobile devices in a portrait mode. So down below we also have one more check, so here I'm checking and saying if device type is a greater than or equal to a device type expanded. So only if our current device uh, has the expanded width, only then we can for example display this uh, analytics panel or this third panel on the right side. And if you don't want to provide this analytics panel for those kind of uh, devices, uh, you can just say device type uh, for example large. And you can just display this uh, analytics panel on uh, larger devices and uh, greater than that. But in this case, I'm going to leave that to expanded. There it is. So before we open up the uh, Android emulator for a, a phone, tablet and a foldable, let me just here uh, go back to this um, device type uh, class once again. So those are uh, helper functions that will allow us to compare those values based on their ranks. By the way, I have also added here a companion object. So the reason why I have added this companion object is to just uh, hide um, that kind of a boilerplate. For example, here, uh, if we didn't have this companion object, we would have to type something like uh, medium and then construct this actual uh, data class, right? So with a uh, minimum width and minimum height, like for example, zero and zero. So this doesn't look that uh, clean, which is why I have uh, created those companion objects that will allow us to uh, write a more cleaner code in our UI, of course. So I think that those uh, infix functions are really helpful. We have uh, more control over uh, what kind of uh, UI elements we want to show to our uh, users on which devices. Uh, now, let me just uh, here uh, try and, for example, first run a uh, Pixel tablet, for example. So I'm going to uh, launch this for a moment. I'm going to observe the log because I'm also here logging uh, which kind of a device type we are uh, currently uh, using whenever the, the width or height uh, changes on our device. So now, currently, in this... Um, expanded or a landscape mode of the tablet, we can see all these uh, components that we have defined in our uh, UI, okay? However, if I rotate now this uh, screen, as you can see, now the debug will say medium. So now we are using that uh, medium device type, and in that case, that the third uh, side panel uh, will not be shown. However, if we rotate that now again, then it will say expanded. There it is. So it works uh, great here. Now let's try and uh, run here a simple uh, Android phone emulator. So this mobile device is now detected as a compact device type. We can try also rotating this uh, screen. There it is. So now we are going to receive here the expanded state because this uh, actual uh, mobile device is uh, quite large. That's why we are seeing here this expanded state and we are displaying all these uh, three kind of uh, side panels along with this uh, navigation rail. However, in most cases, uh, we wouldn't want to display this uh, third panel because it's a mobile device, right? And not some kind of a large uh, tablet or a desktop device. So to fix this issue, we could, for example, uh, create uh, another extension function and uh, calculate something like this. For example, uh, in this case, we are uh, saying uh, if uh, the minimum width is uh, greater than the minimum height, of course, uh, if the minimum height is uh, less than uh, 500 and if the width is uh, greater than uh, the height at least uh, 1.7 times. So we could now write here another logic and say uh, and if a device type is a landscape phone or actually is a not a landscape phone. So we're gonna display here this uh, analytics panel only if this device type uh, is a greater than or equal to expanded device type and if this device is actually not a landscape phone. So now if we launch this application, uh, then this uh, third uh, one will disappear. So if I now try to launch, uh, for example, a, a tablet. Okay, so now in the landscape mode, uh, it didn't render this uh, 
third uh, panel so we can now increase uh, for example and say 1.8 uh, or so on i will just say maybe two or 1.8 that would be even better but let me just here test it out okay so now we can see this third panel on the tablet and on a mobile device let's see okay so on a mobile device uh, now it's not visible and on a tablet uh, it actually is there you go so this logic right here will work because in most cases uh, the actual height of the screen or the width of our actual screen is uh, probably larger than uh, the height two times but we can reduce that to maybe 1.8 uh, to just uh, be safe right okay so here it worked as you can see on a tablet we can see this uh, third panel and on a smartphone device it's not visible so yeah even 1.8 is uh, fine in this case you can uh, tweak these values by yourself and this is uh, currently my approach uh, when it comes to creating uh, adaptable and uh, resizable uis across uh, various platforms and uh, devices i will of course uh, continue uh, following uh, the official uh, libraries and see uh, if they introduce uh, some more uh, comprehensive and even better solution that will be even better than this one and uh, i will be sure to include this uh, whole uh, class and those uh, extension functions in uh, my uh, github repository so that you can uh, copy it and uh, check it out by yourself so be sure to comment down below let me know your thoughts uh, about this uh, custom class of mine also if you have some suggestions uh, be sure to write that down as well other than that uh, don't forget to leave a like to this video if you find it helpful and uh, thank you for watching.